Hello and welcome to the Side One YouTube channel. My name is Ray, and in this video, the InMove i2 head build part 11. So this is version two head. Um, I'm going to swap out the two eyebrow components with these new version threes. So when you look at them from the the end or from the side, you can see that the new parts are significantly thicker and would explain why the eyebrow parts didn't actually make contact with the face mask. So we'll start by removing the old ones first. Now if I don't take the servo horn off the servo, then I won't have to recalibrate that part. Now I did paint a little bit of resin, a little bit of silicon on the front of these to help grip better, which obviously didn't work because it wasn't making contact. And I've managed to get it onto the screws. And you can see there is significant difference in thickness. Now there's a heap of holes back here. I went with this hole and this hole previously, I'll go with the same holes. Now these screws that I'm using are 1.7 or M1.7 by 6 millimeters long. I think I might have to open this big hole here up. This is the slot for the top of the servo horn here and screw to go through. Those screws don't seem to be long enough. So I'm going to have to countersink them a little bit to make, make them reach. Okay, so when I've printed these, I've printed these on the bed, uh, flat on the bed, and I've got some, just trying to show it a bit, there's some elephant's foot on around the edges, and that's uh, hitting on the central column of the nose support, so I'm going to have to clean those off. I think I might move this back a bit, one hole over. That's much better. You can even see that is now closer to the same level as the forehead servo contact points. So let's clean up the other one before we start. Now let's get the other one off. I 
I'll need to clean that hole up too. Hey, they look alright. So let's mount this up. And we'll plug it in. Alright, now that we've got that on, and it looks pretty good, let's put the, forehead, the skull back on. Now I think my nut on this side just popped out, but that's not going anywhere anyway. I think it looks alright. see what it looks like with the face. One of my magnets has come off the... oh no, no mag... One of the magnets is coming off up here, but other than that, hell seem to be on there. I'm probably going to have to play around a little bit with the eyelids. But yeah, that's um, come together. Not too bad. I'm contemplating getting some more of the silicon, mold, uh, silicon material to cast another one. Have another go at it later. I think one of the modifications I might make. So this is the inner mold. The outer mold I think was pretty good, except I coated all of these in resin to try and make it smoother and get rid of some of the layer lines. And that turns out it was a big mistake. The resin that I used uh, is a the Anycubic Tough Flexible Resin and it is an inhibitor to the silicon curing so this is a bad thing what i think i might do on the next one apart from paint it with a clear acrylic uh, apparently the acrylic uh, sealer will prevent that um, inhibiting of the silicon's curing so i'll need to do that on the next one and what I might do is with the spots where the magnets are mounted, I will drill a small hole in the middle, very small hole, then sand those flush, put a countersunk screw head in, or countersunk screw in, so that the top of the screw is the same height as what this is, or was, and then stick the magnets to those before I mould. Then when I mould it, the magnet will be embedded in the silica. And I think uh, that will give me better adhesion of the magnets onto the silicon itself. Uh, this is actually near enough a pre-version one. I think I've got one of the very early prototypes uh, so I could start playing around with it. And it was a while before I printed it and I discovered that this particular version didn't have the jaw magnets provisioned in it. So when I print the new one out, because I damaged this one, if you remember from my previous video, I uh, broke the top tab off. Um, I think uh, that will give me better adhesion with my magnets. And having a clear acrylic coat on it to separate the resin from the silicon will also give me better curing. So these are things that I've learnt. 
Um, if you're interested in how I got the eyeballs themselves to look all right, it's a bit hard to tell in these images, but I thought those eyeballs came out quite well. Uh, this is the gadget. I reprinted this after I broke the last one. So this is designed. It's got a very similar catch mechanism to what's on the eyeball uh, pivot assembly. So the eyeball will clip onto this. There's your little groove for the bottom. You can push this piece on and with a couple of screws make sure it's held in the right spot. This piece pushes in to keep those arms separated out so it gets a good solid grip on the eyeball and then you can mount that in your electric drill. I use my battery drill and that allows you to spin it and sand and get a very smooth surface. I started out with um, this type of sanding material. Uh, I used the 400 grit so I started out at 400 grit essentially on this one. After I was happy with it being smooth and there were no lines, I then switched to the 800 wet and dry. And using water to keep it wet, it helps one displace the material that's been sanded off. And two, stops it from melting your plastic if you're using a FDM print like PLA. Uh, it also helps clears it away and stops it choking up the sandpaper uh, when you're using the water as well. After I was happy with the smoothness, I then applied paint using an airbrush while still mounted in the bracket and rotating so I got a nice even coat. Of course, do that with the iris out, paint the iris separately and then install that later. I have got a camera mounted in this eye. You can just see it in there on the video. This eye doesn't have an eye camera in it at all. I may eventually get another camera for it. The camera is connected to a board inside. You, I showed that being mounted and comes out to a USB cable. And this you can connect up and uh, to whatever computer you're running, whether that be the Raspberry Pi or a PC. I have had this connected to the PC and the image is not too bad. It's not an overly fast camera, but that's all right because the software we're using to look at the camera isn't particularly fast at processing the images anyway. That'll do for this video. In the next video, I'm going to reconnect the Raspberry Pi 5 again. Uh, power it up. I will no doubt update to the latest version of my robot lab as well. I'll do that before I start the video. Uh, there's been at least five versions released since the last time I had that Raspberry Pi running. And if all goes well, we can then look into mounting this head onto the body. To see when those videos come out, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It's a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to help the channel further, I now have the membership join on the YouTube channel and I also have my Patreon account. And you can join my VIP Patreon Go Lucky, my All Access Patreon Jeff Gerd, my Builder Patrons Al Morales 45. Andrea Cardone and Havish, as well as my YouTube member uh, Thomas Cleveland in helping to support the channel. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below or feel free to drop into either any of the discords. I will have my discord, the official InMove discord and the My Robot Lab discord linked in the description below. And we'll see you in the next video.